And so a great big welcome to you as we gather as God's people. And this is the 10th Sunday of Pentecost. I know many of you are at home in your bathrobe, sipping your coffee. <laughs> and we're glad you're with us. And many are in the church. But wherever we are together, we are God's church. So glad to have you with us. And so today, a little bit about the service, uh, the lessons. I'm dealing with the epistle lesson today. And it talks about one of my favorite passages. It's Hebrews chapter 11. About the heroes of our faith. There's so many heroes. Uh, we're surrounded, as, as the scriptures say, by a cloud of witnesses. And I thought it'd be good to uh, highlight these heroes and a little bit of what makes a hero. And that uh, the heroes of long ago, but I believe that we can be God's heroes even today too. So I hope the, the service today is uh, helpful and meaningful for you in your Christian journey. And just glad to have you with us. And so as we begin the service, we do so in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so let us pray. O oh God, Judge Eternal, you love justice and you hate oppression, and you call us to share your zeal for truth. Lord, give us courage to take our stand with all the victims of bloodshed and greed, and following your servants and prophets, to look to the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. And all God's people said, Amen. Again, glad to have you. Uh, turn the service now over to our music team as they share their gifts of music. God bless. Now the feast and celebration all of creation sings for joy to the God of life and love and freedom praise and glory forevermore. Now is the feast of the Lamb once slain whose blood has Our epistle lesson for today is from Hebrews chapter 11, beginning with verse 29. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land. But when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient, because she had received the spies in peace. But what more should I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched rage in fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, but foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sawn in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. 
Yet all of these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better, so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the author, excuse me, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding his shame, has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. This ends the reading. Jesus said, I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it's completed. Do you think that I've come to bring peace to the earth? No. No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five and one household will be divided, three against two, and two against three. They will be divided, father against son, and son against father, mother against daughter, and daughter against mother. Mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, When you see a cloud rising in the west, immediately say, It's going to rain, and so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, There'll be a scorching heat, and it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. And so grace and peace to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. And so let us pray. Lord, we thank you again as we gather as your people. Yes, some still in the respective homes and some in the church. The Lord, together we are your people. The Lord, come. Come and fill the hearts and lives of your people. I pray now that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleased in your sight. And this I pray. Amen. A certain Eskimo man was taken on an expedition to the North Pole a number of years ago. Later, as a reward for faithful service, he was brought to New York for a short visit. And he was amazed at what he saw. When he turned to his native village, he told stories of buildings that rose into the very face of the sky, of streetcars, which he described as houses that moved along the trail with people living in them and as they moved, of mammoth bridges, artificial lights, and all the other dazzling sights to be seen in the Big Apple of that day. Well, his people looked at him coldly, and they walked away. They began to call him Sagdlunk, meaning the liar, and his name he carried in shame to the grave. Long before his death, his original name was entirely forgotten. Well, sometime later, another Eskimo named Maitek also visited New York, where he saw many things of the fur the first time, and he too was very impressed. Later, upon his return, he recalled the tragedy of Sagdlunk and decided that it would not be wise to tell the truth. So he told his people how he paddled a kayak on the banks of the great river, the Hudson, and how each morning he hunted ducks and geese and seals. My tech, in the eyes of his countrymen, was a very honest man, and his neighbors treated him with great respect. History is replete with misunderstood geniuses, tortured artists, and unappreciated prophets. Greatness has its price. Society is often unprepared for truth. Ask Galileo, ask the pioneer, the pathfinder, the innovator. They risk ridicule every single time. It's not easy being a hero. Maybe that's why there are so few of them around today. A New York Times article asked a while back, it says, where have all the heroes gone? And it's a good question. Many years ago, photographers shot pictures of Princess Diana on the beach of Nurture Island in a one-piece pink and black swimsuit. People magazine reported that the company had, that made that particular swimsuit had been flooded with requests for the suit. They estimated that those pictures of Diana had increased the sale of the swimsuit fourfold. As someone has put it, we have substituted celebrities for heroes, 
Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous, Four Epics of the Good and the Courageous. Perhaps one of the greatest needs we have today is to regain a sense of the heroic, yes? Jesse Jackson said that growing up as a fatherless child in difficult surroundings in a little home in South Carolina, said he had one asset, and that is that he went to Sunday school. And there he heard his teacher tell about the great heroes of the Bible. He knew in his little heart that if God could use them in great ways, that God could use Jesse too. He said that was the greatest influence in the kind of man that he grew up to be. Chapter 11 of Hebrews, our gospel lesson for today, represents the Bible's gallery of heroes. Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, Rahab, Gideon, Samson, David, Samuel, as was many who are unnamed but not forgotten. Heroes, every single one. Do you see their story? It can be our story. For God is still in the business of creating heroes. A young man was listening as the great Boston preacher Philip Brooks talked of the great days that passed when the U.S. was a growing nation. He told about the time when brave explorers traveled into areas that had not been explored. He told of those who risked and sometimes gave their lives as they helped develop the country. The young man heard Bishop Brooks tell of those who gave their lives so that others might have liberty to read their Bibles and to live a life of faith. These stories thrilled this youth, and he said to the bishop, he said, I wish I had lived those far-off days. I think I, too, could have been a hero. Bishop replied, My boy, every age brings its opportunity. And if you cannot be a hero now, you would not have been a hero then. You see, God is still in the business of creating heroes. You and I can be heroic, if we so choose. So, of what kind of stuff are heroes made? I think there's many ingredients, of course, that go to making up a hero. But I'd like to center on three of what I think are the most important. First of all, heroes are people of great courage. Two small boys walked into the dentist's office. One of them said bravely, said, I want a tooth taken out and I don't want any gas. And I don't want it deadened because we're in a hurry. The dentist said, you're quite a brave young man. Which tooth is it? The boy turned to his smaller friend and said, show me your tooth, Tommy. <laughs> I'm reminded of the story that took place back in the Winter Olympics of 1988 when we saw one of our own speed skaters by the name of Scott Jensen. He slipped and fell, not only once, but on two different occasions. You would not find his name among the medal winners. You didn't see him on the victory platform, but he showed himself to be a young man of great courage. For one of the most trying times of his life, you see his sister, his very close sister, had just died of leukemia just a couple hours earlier. And he managed to bind up his spirit, he ma managed to lace up his skates, and he managed to carry the banner of the U.S. into the speed skating competition. In the closing ceremonies, it was Scott Jensen who led the U.S. procession. There are still persons of courage in our world. The courage is only apparent in the face of hardship. Most of us, we prefer comfort to courage. Maybe that's why there are a few heroes nowadays. Mark, Mark, Dr. Mark Trotter notes, he said that God gives heroes of the Bible very little comfort. He goes on to say, you ought to read the stories of the heroes in the Bible, the pilgrims of faith. Surprisingly, God treats them roughly. To the complaining Job, God says, stand up on your feet like a man. I have something to show you. To Elijah, who's hiding from Jezebel in a cave, God says, get out of there. I have something better for you to do with your life. And to Moses, hiding on his father-in-law's farm in Midian, not wanting to go back to the dangers of Egypt, complaining that he can't be a leader. God says, I don't care if you don't think you're a leader. I will tell you what to say and what to do. And then to Paul, plagued by some thorn in his flesh for which he was given no answer. Just the words, keep on going, and I'll give you strength. My grace is sufficient for you. These are heroes of faith that the Bible holds up as our examples. They're the examples of what faith looks like. There are also examples of what courage looks like. Courage is a resource that God gives us when we're fighting giants. If we never go out to fight giants, we have no need for courage. Of course, life sometimes does send us giants, doesn't it? A fatal disease, the loss of a loved one, the end of a dream or a career. Sometimes we face giants in the moral arena. 
ethics on the job, faithfulness in the face of great temptation. Some of the most courageous people I know will never make the People magazine. They're quiet people, modest people. But they stand for what is right. They refuse to let go of their faith in times of great stress. They hang in there when the going gets tough. In their own quiet way, they are heroic. They're people of great courage. In the second place, heroes are people of great character. Many of us can remember the story of Sir Galahad and his search for the Holy Grail. Remember how the gallant knight was described? Quote, his strength was the strength of ten because his heart was pure. End of quote. Let me just say, I don't know very many celebrities today who would be described as, described as having pure hearts. Yes? But Detroit's radio station, WXYZ, when it's prime, was responsible for the creation of, of different heroes, one of them being the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger had suggested the main idea for the creation of, of these heroes, and he gave the following orders for designing the character of the Lone Ranger. He said, the Lone Ranger always uses perfect English, no accent. Don't ever cast aspersions on any race or religious group. Be fair, make him serious. And remember, the Lone Ranger never shoots to kill. He is a sober-minded man with a righteous purpose. And make the kids look up to him. Make him an idol. You see, the station manager felt it was important for a hero to be good and righteous. We can only hope for such virtues in the people that our children idolize. Perhaps in the absence of such heroes, it's more important than ever for moms and dads to be persons of character. If the kids can't look to their cultural idols for appropriate role models, maybe they can look to their moms and dads. Heroes are persons of great courage and of great character. And finally, most of all, heroes have a great confidence, but not in themselves, but confidence in the Lord, their God. The amazing thing about those listed in Hebrews 11 is not how heroic they were, but how human, how ordinary, how very much like us they truly were. Their courage and their character were not their own. For the writer of Hebrews, they were the essence of what faith is all about. I like the way one commentator put it. She said, I've grown up in a world of superheroes, Wonder Woman, Superman, Captain Marvel, the Fantastic Four, ordinary people like me without superpowers or limbs that stretch for miles with the ability to change form. Well, they can't be heroes, can they? The long list in Hebrews chapter 11 contains a telling phrase. They were weak, but they became strong. It seems that strength and superpowers are not prerequisites for heroiness. God's heroes are weak people, people who have simply made themselves available. And being a hero is not ducking into a phone booth and putting on tights and a flashy costume. It's acknowledging our weakness and limitations, making all that we have and all that we are available to God. That's how God's heroes are born. And so, Lord... Help us to the power of your Holy Spirit. Help us to be those heroes. And Lord, give us the courage and character needed as we continue to serve you in all that we do. For I pray it may be so. And all God's people said, Amen. God bless you.
Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. I believe that you are truly present in the sacrament of Holy Communion. Lord, I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, and let me never be separated from you. O Lord, may I live in you, and you in me, in this life, and in the life to come. And all God's people said, Amen. And so again, we want to thank you for joining us this day. We hope this service today has been helpful in your Christian journey. Please know our love and prayers are with each and every one of you. And again, if we can ever be of any help, uh, do, do not hesitate to call us or email us at the church office. And so receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.